Thanks so much for joining us today, everyone, uh, for the second of our four trainings on mobile data collection using the platform ComCare. I'm Meg Gibbon, and I'm the Program Manager for the Meta Project. We're joined again today by two ComCare experts, Alexandra Morgan Kisorale and Jeremy Waxman of Demagi, which is a software company that produces ComCare. Please note that as last time, all attendees are currently muted. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to type them in the chat throughout, and we'll address those during Q&A at different times throughout today's presentation. I also hope that all attendees were able to join us on our previous training or watch the recording, and that you have all already created a ComCare account. Um, if you haven't done so, this is a step you'll need to take before being able to follow along with our presenters, either during this training today um, or independently afterwards. So um, what we'll do, uh, again, as we did last time, is provide that link. So if you haven't created the ComCare HQ account, you can uh, do so and follow along now. Or go ahead and review this training or do it independently yourself afterwards. And so with that, I'll hand it over to Alex to get started. Thank you so much. Um, hi again, everyone. Uh, welcome back to those of you who participated in session one, and welcome to those of you who might be joining for the first time. As Meg mentioned, my name is Alexandra. I'm joined by my colleague, uh, Jeremy Waxman, um, and we both work for a company called Demagi. Demagi is a socially conscious technology company. We were founded in 2002 out of Harvard and MIT. And we have more than 10 years of experience um, implementing 300 plus projects in over 50 countries um, using our software called ComCare, which is a leading open source mobile platform for frontline workers around the world. And so Meta and Demagi, um, in thinking about the work that you all do, um, decided to offer a four part series on how to use the ComCare software to convert paper forms into digital forms that can be used for mobile data collection and case management. When we talk about mobile data collection, what we're talking about specifically is the ability to um, use a mobile phone or a tablet to collect information and then access that information on a computer for data analysis and reporting. And so you can also use the same software for the case management work that you all do. And our goal throughout this series, um, and especially kicking off today, is to introduce you to ComCare and help you gain the skills and confidence to use it to support your programs. And then by the end of the four sessions, uh, we believe that you'll be well equipped to build basic mobile applications. So this session is specifically focused on building a basic data collection application. So we won't get into any sort of complex workflows where you um, are able to connect information throughout an application. We want to focus specifically and very simply on the process of just collecting some information in a digital form. So this session is split into two parts. The first part is focused on preparing to build an application. So before even jumping into ComCare itself, before accessing the software, there's some preparation that needs to be done. Um, and so we've outlined a few things to talk about. Um, we want to talk a bit about understanding the requirements in the workflow, examining existing program tools and resources, and defining how those workflows and those tools can be supported in a digital form within ComCare. So that's the first part. It's all about preparing um, to use ComCare to convert paper forms into digital forms. And then part two will be more um, will be focused more on the practical development of one data collection form. So we'll talk a little bit about a use case, and then we'll talk a bit about um, how to address the use case, but we'll only focus in on one data collection form today. And during that, during that section of this webinar, we want to orient you to ComCare HQ and the application builder, if you're not already familiar with it. We want to introduce some basic form building techniques 
And then we want to actually develop the first form, um, which will be based on a case study and a form that we've identified. This will also be the first part in um, the application that we'll build over the next couple of sessions. So we're really excited to get this process started and then in subsequent sessions build upon what we do today. So to ground our, our app building, we want to start with a case study. All right. So the focus will be on community health promotion, which we understand is something that many organizations, many of your organizations may do, or at least you may be familiar with. So let's take, for example, the organization Welcome Home, which runs a community health promotion program. Its case workers train past refugee clients now well established in the U.S. as community health promoters. So that's how the program is set up. Basically, when new refugees first arrive, these CHPs, these community health promoters, give them one-on-one -on -one health and wellness guidance. So one CHP, Ashley, has met with a new client, Sarah. Ashley will give Sarah nutrition orientation at the grocery store. Um, she'll visit her in her home to explain the U.S. health care system and check in with her. Ashley coordinates this and doesn't often come into the welcome home office. So we're learning here a little bit about the workflow and her engagement, Ashley's engagement with her client, Sarah. So to track client progress, Ashley, excuse me, completes a detailed baseline and inline assessment using Microsoft Word. So she uses a Word document. She then comes home, she copies her data into Excel, uh, Ashley wishes she had an easier way to capture assessment data in the field, not just for Sarah, but for all of her clients. Um, and she really wants to make sure that she's able to protect that sensitive health data that she collects. She wants it to be stored securely, but also um, be easily accessible, um, easy to export for the monthly reports that she's required to submit. So how can ComCare help? Step one, understand requirements and workflow. So before building, before starting to build an application, we want to understand what Ashley needs as the CHP, and we want to understand what Sarah needs as the client. And then we want to try to accommodate each of their needs in the application, and possibly even some needs that they don't anticipate. To frame that sort of understanding, that information gathering, here are some key questions related to workflow and design. So what are the different interactions in the workflow? Right? So in the case in the case study that I just read briefly, we see that there are multiple types of interactions that Ashley is having with Sarah. Uh, some of that is data collection, some of that is counseling, it's information provision. So these are the different interactions. What are key challenges to CHP? faces in her work, some of which is sort of the multi-step process to getting the data that she collects in a format um, that is easy to report, right? So what is the CHP going to be tracking? The people, is the families, is the tasks? What information do the clients need? So here we're talking specifically about what does Sarah need, um, what sort of information she needs access to. What information does the CHP need in order to be able to access or update? And so um, updating information as she gets that information. Uh, how familiar are the CHPs with using a phone and tablet? Sometimes that's, that's oftentimes a, a really important detail. Uh, we want to make sure that CHPs are actually digital literate, are comfortable with technology, and if not, that they're trained for that. Um, or that the application is designed in, in a way that um, support their comfort levels. How frequently is reporting required? What information is required for reporting? So that's not necessarily what's on the phone, but the way that information needs to be reported informs the way that an application may be built, a form may be built. How does the CHP communicate with their supervisors? How many clients does the CHP have? How do they distinguish between different records? So there's a number of different questions that we often ask in, in the process of, of thinking about preparing to build an application. 
And so here's just one example of a breakdown workflow. So we're, we're breaking down what we understand about Ashley and Sarah's interaction into some key components. And we see here that their first interaction may involve a client intake and a baseline. There may be some follow-ups um, and subsequent interactions. Maybe periodically, Ashley wants to update basic client information or make a referral. At some point, she'll also need to do an inline assessment. And then on a monthly basis, there's a status report that is sent to um, Welcome Home. So that's step one. It's just getting a sense of the requirements as well as the sort of workflow, the interaction between the worker and their clients. Step two, we want to be able to examine existing tools and resources. So what is already in use by the worker to support the workflows that we just uncovered, right? What other resources are available to them? So Ashley is using a few forms here is an example of a form. And as we're examining the form, we want to ask another series of questions because we want to make sure that we understand each question, what is being asked and why. We want to know how it relates to other questions. We want to know how the mobile worker should interact with it, et cetera. And so here's some examples. Um, what type of question is each field? Is it a date question? Is it a text question? Is it a number? Um, is it a multiple choice question? That will inform some of the app building and, and we'll show you that in the second half. Is there skip logic or branching? So if it's a yes or no question, does, that, does the answer inform the next question thereafter? Are additional questions shown? Um, are certain questions skipped? So we would want to know that. Are some fields optional versus required? Do some fields have validation? So a great example, date of birth, uh, we would want to ensure that the mobile worker puts in a date that is in the past and not in the future. And so we'd want to constrain that um, and ensure that, which is easier to do in a digital form than in a paper form. How frequently is each field asked? Um, do some fields need to be updated over time? Where in the workflow does each section fit? So sometimes when we have paper forms, what we do is fill out section one and then we skip down to section three because section two is only relevant during certain visits. Um, in a digital format, we can actually break those out uh, and, and reconfigure them so that, only, so that the, the workers only see the questions that they need to see at the point at which they need to see it. And it supports the workflow that they're trying to um, implement at the time, the interaction that they're trying to have at that given point in time. So that's step number two, is examining the existing resources and tools and understanding all of the questions and different data points that are currently being collected and in what way. So step three is combining what we find out from step one and step two. So we want to define how to support the workflow and the tools in a digital form. And so we want to kind of think about, to build on the, the point I just made, we want to think about how to structure all of the information and how that information relates to other information. And, and we'll, we'll group those things, we'll group that information, the data into forms. And so um, this is purely an example um, based on the use case. We may have three different forms that we want to build as part of the CHP application. The first form being a client intake form. So this opens a new case for Sarah and it gathers basic demographic data. In the second form, Perhaps that's the evaluation form. And so it has the questions and the prompts related to the baseline and inline assessments. Collects that data, generates scores for each 
section, et cetera. And then the third form that we likely want to have available for Ashley is an update basic information or remove client form. And so this will allow Ashley to update information about there, some basic key demographic information, if it changes, as it changes, without re-registering Sarah um, into her application, without opening up a new case. So it's basically just update, edit. And then removing a client from the system is really important, um, especially if someone, for whatever reason, leaves the program. There's a way on the phone to allow the mobile worker to remove that person from their case list and indicate um, why they're removing that person from their case list. And so today, we'll actually focus specifically on building out form number one, this client intake form. And so usually from here, after we have understood the workflows, understood the requirements for Ashley, what Ashley needs, what Sarah needs, we know how they're going to interact. Um, we have a sense of the tools that are being used and how we may want to restructure them to fit best in a digital format, we usually then convert that into an Excel spreadsheet. And we call this a specification document. And essentially, it is adapting into an Excel format um, the paper tools and any additional sort of data that we think should be collected into Excel and this provides a higher level of granularity, um, which can be used to guide the app building process. And so we'll talk a bit more about this, and this will make a lot more sense as we start building an application. But just a few things to point out. You'll see that in the second column, there's type. And so that gets back to step number two, where we start to examine the existing tools you can determine that a client name, when we collect, that's a, that's a text question. When we collect the date of birth, that's a date question. For a sex, that's a multiple choice. We want to put, we want to have male and female as the choice option for that particular question, et cetera. For phone number, the type is phone number. And then you'll notice in other columns, for example, validation condition, you'll see some text there that may not be very familiar to you. Um, this, is, this is how we're communicating with ComCare and telling it, hey, if someone answers the question in this way, this is valid, this is not valid. And then there's a message based on whether or not that validation condition was met. And then there's also opportunities to do calculations, which we'll talk about as well as indicate whether or not a form or a question is required or not required. And so on, for the mobile worker, they will actually need to answer that question in order to move forward. So that was a quick overview of preparation, of the process of preparing to um, build an application and actually let me share with you what that form looks like, as well as a larger view of the specification. So I showed a, a, a really small um, image of the form. But for today, this is the form that serves as our inspiration. You'll see here that we're collecting a lot of background information and in the paper form, all of this is just open text. Client name is open, the CHP name is open, the date is open. And then below, we have some biographical information. And we can see that right now in the paper form, these are multiple choice questions. This is likely a number question, et cetera. And we see some questions here that are also multiple choice. And so this all makes sense on paper. But as we examine this, we may actually begin to think about how do we leverage 
the advantages that technology provides us to enhance this form um, and to improve data entry and make that easier for the worker, but also reduce data entry errors, which makes it easier for us to analyze that data uh, and clean that data later. And so we are going to go through each of these and actually explain why or what sort of question they ought to be and, and what the advantages are to each of them. And just as a quick example before opening up for questions, because I think it would be good um, to do that. This is an example of the form, the client name, date of birth, sex, and a specification. And so moving from that paper version, this right here, to a version where we can see exactly what type of question it is, what text should be shown to the mobile worker, and any sort of validation condition that we want for that question. So I'll pause. And maybe we can open it up for initial questions just related to the process of preparing forms for um, building a digital form. Sure. So I had a couple questions. We'll probably keep it brief for the first Q&A, but uh, please feel free to continue to put questions in the chat throughout, and we'll have a couple other periods for Q&A a little bit later on. First question it related to the use of a paper form. And so in this use case, we're converting a paper form to a mobile app. Um, what if there's a situation where there's no paper form um, existing and the idea would be to start off with a mobile app? Would you recommend creating something that's like a paper form first or sketching it out using the kind of specification that you've um, indicated? That's a great question. Um, I think I've seen this done a few different ways, and uh, this is also a great opportunity for Jeremy to chime in. I know he has, he's seen this um, happen in, in a number of ways as well. I think that a number of, of projects that we've had um, have started with no paper forms. Uh, and so generally what we try to do are provide them with tools to structure some of their thinking. What exactly do you want to use this application for? What type of data are you interested in, in gathering? What, what is the function of the application, right? And so is it a data collection application? Um, is it going to be used for service delivery? Just sort of trying to understand at first what, what the application is for. So that's, that's a starting point. A lot of times um, it's helpful to sketch it out. So the, the example where we show the workflow, generally even if there are not forms available, there's an understanding of what sort of work you're hoping to support through the application. And so being able to sketch out how you want the app, what the, what the workflow is and how you want the app to support that is a great starting point. I know some people have actually started with the specification doc. Um, and then we've worked to refine it. Um, Jeremy, does it? I'll, I'll let you. I'll let you chime in. I think there. I think there are a number of, of different answers um, depending on the program. One takeaway is that you can absolutely um, decide to build an application without having pre-existing forms, but that process has to be informed by something, um, and that might be a workflow diagram. Um, it could be a specification doc. It could be some sort of sketch of a form, um, but it's, it's certainly necessary to try to do something to, to better understand what you're trying to achieve before jumping into Comfair. Yeah, I don't have too much to add to that. I think uh, Alex hit the, the main points there, but um, I think certainly if you don't have a predefined form, then you're, you're it makes things almost easier in a way, especially if you're um, rolling something out later because people are a bit more open to going with the structures that are su suggested by the um, 
by the platform, which I think will make more sense once you start seeing what it looks like. And it is also possible to just directly build into Calm Care. Um, so we find that it, it tends to be useful to have some sort of external document to look at, whether that's this Excel specification file. Some people use a PowerPoint. Some people might use just a list of questions in a Word document um, where you can indicate some of the details that you um, that you want to make sure to include as you go along. And the other point uh, that I should mention is that Excel uh, specification document that, that Alex showed, when you're working in ComCare, you can create an output which looks very similar to that. So it makes it very easy to iterate with people who are not necessarily involved with the details of working in ComCare. They can, if you get oriented to what those sheets look like and you need to have some back and forth or um, you want to make a big round of changes, then it's easy to be able to just do that in Excel uh, and then to track those changes when you make them in the, the, um, in the actual application. Great, thanks. And that actually answers another question that I had uh, received regarding the sort of design aspect. So under the examining existing resources section, there were a lot of great questions about thinking through what this app could look like. But for someone who may not be familiar um, with mobile apps in general, it may be hard to visualize what this type of app could be. So I was curious, are there examples of apps? I know you have shown us one on our previous training, but I think it, um, I, I agree that it would be helpful potentially to look at some examples of apps and get some ideas about how to design your own. Is that something that's available? Uh, we do have some resources on our help site that outline different features or different um, different workflow structures that can be kind of a guiding uh, a guiding point for for what those look like. Um, and, and I think we can make sure to, to share those out later. And as we go through building out this app over the, the this today and the next couple of sessions, we'll walk through different stages where you see, you know, at the, the beginning it's just like a very basic survey form, which is sometimes that's all you need is something very simple like that, to something that's more complex where you're creating, using um, the case management feature and building out a record over time. So we'll, we'll be able to illustrate a couple of those and point back to some of those questions as we're going through the um, app up process. Great. I think with that, we'll maybe move on to the next session of the presentation and take a few more questions a little bit later on. Sure, that sounds great. So now we're actually going to move into ComCare HQ. Um, I know that during our last session and perhaps even in between, um, many of you were able to create an account on ComCare HQ. Um, if you were able to and if you're interested in following along, feel free. Uh, otherwise, you can just watch and uh, review this recording later or um, go to Demagi Academy afterward. I will actually ensure that, make sure that we have the specification document in there so that you can build it on your own from scratch if you want to. Um, as well as additional questions that you can add to the application for practice. So all of that will be available to you after the session. Uh, within 24 hours, the recording will be available as well as all of the supplemental materials. If you're interested, again, follow along. Feel free to sign into your account. So when we start building, I will actually toggle a bit. So you'll see that happening so that you can, you can see what it's actually like to build an application. But before we get into that, I just want to do a quick orientation to the platform for those of you who are new to the platform. So when you sign into ComCare HQ, you will see a dashboard like the one that you're seeing on the screen. If it's your very first time signing in, you've just created a project, then you'll see a dashboard that looks a little different. It will actually, it will ask you what sort of application, what kind of application you want to build and you'll have three options there. Uh, if that's what you're seeing as you're following along, select blank application. Otherwise, if you have signed into your account before, you should see something like this. So you can think of this dashboard as your homepage for Compure HQ. And from the dashboard, you can access each component of the platform. Application, so in 
the application section, you can build, update, and deploy applications. In the report section, you can view worker monitoring reports and inspect project data. In the data section, you can export and manage data. Users, you can manage accounts for mobile workers as well as ComCareHQ users. If you had a chance to go through the fundamentals course, ComCare fundamentals course, uh, between the first session and this session, then mobile workers and ComCareHQ workers are very familiar terms to you. In brief, a ComCareHQ worker is a web user. That is a person who accesses ComCareHQ and um, may perform various tasks within the actual web-based platform. A mobile worker, like it sounds, <laughs> Um, is the person who accesses the application on their phone. And so those two types of workers are different and they have different access. So someone can have a mobile worker account, but they would not be able to access ComCareHQ and vice versa. If you have a ComCareHQ account, you would not be able to use that account to access your mobile application. You would need a mobile worker account as well. And we have lots of documentation available for how to set that up. And so there's a section to configure both mobile workers and web users or these ComCareHQ users. You will also see something called the exchange where you can download and share ComCare applications with other users around the world. The settings, um, so you can set your project-wide settings and manage your subscription. And then we have a link out to our help site, which is our knowledge base. And so we've, we've actually linked this in the course as well. Uh, we've also linked it within the presentation. Uh, we have plugged it a lot because this is a repository of tons of information related to ComCare application building and project management and data and reports. And this is a great go-to resource. Um, when you have questions. And so that is accessible on your dashboard. You'll notice that along the top is a menu bar and all of the same components that you find here on your dashboard are also found here across the top. And so when you navigate away from the dashboard, you'll actually use these tabs to navigate throughout the platform. If ever you feel lost, click on the dashboard, and you'll return to this home page, and you can navigate the site from there. So because we're focusing on application building, I won't get into all of, I won't click on these pages and show you what's in each of these pages. We'll actually just focus specifically on the applications tab, and we'll click on untitled application because we want to start with a blank slate. And so this is called the application builder, this entire expanse called the application builder. And from here, you'll see that you can still see this menu bar along the top. You'll also see a number of options on the side menu. And so we won't, we won't get into this too much, but there's the ability to publish your application. Here are the settings. This is the page that we're on now, the settings. Multimedia allows you to manage your multimedia throughout your application. Languages allows you to manage languages. And app summary allows you to see at a glance the entire application, all of the questions and logic that you've built into your application and you can see that form by form or case by case, which we will, will introduce during the next session, but it's a great sort of resource to see at a glance what you build. And then here, you'll see that you can create your modules and your forms. So just backing up really quickly, a ComCare application is made up of modules and modules are made up of forms. And so an application we all understand, yes? So an application is what you'll actually get on your phone. It's the full package. 
a module you can think of as like a folder. And it's a folder that contains multiple forms. And so oftentimes when we build applications, we want to, um, we want to collect forms that are similar together, or we want to join forms that are similar together into one module. And so that hierarchy is application, is made up of modules, and modules are made up of forms. So that's what you see here. And for a, a really great explanation, I encourage you to check out Concert Fundamentals, where we talk through a lot of this terminology that is so prevalent throughout the platform, if you want some familiarity with that. Okay, and so here are a number of settings. A lot of these are, they have default settings. We're going to leave those settings um, as their default and just name this application. Notice I can, and if I decide, actually I don't want my application to be named that, I actually want it to be called CHP application. I can change that, click the check mark, and it should save it. Okay, and if you want to, you can actually enter um, a description of the application. So, as Alex is writing in the description, I'll just mention you'll see various places throughout the application where you can enter um, enter sort of comments or reminders, and every all those things are meant just for the person who's working on the app. So it's useful if you have a lot of different applications working out of one project, then you have sort of quick reminders about what a particular form question app module was uh, intended to do. And so now we're going to do the same thing for a module. And remember that the first module, the first form we want to build is a client intake form. And so we're just going to call this folder client destination. And same thing here, as Jeremy mentioned, you can write a description here. We'll skip that for now. And we'll name our form. Okay, so now we can click edit. And now we've entered the form builder. And so this is a, a portion of the application builder, and it's specifically for designing uh, and creating these forms that will then comprise the entire application. Let me just talk a bit about what's here, and then we can start populating this with questions. Along the top, you'll see a question bar. And what's great about this is that as you scroll over, if you're not sure what the symbol means, we have some text there to support your understanding. I have to admit that I oftentimes, as much as I build applications, um, will sometimes want to scroll over and, and just double check that I'm choosing the right question type, but that's an easy way um, to know. As you go through and click on these uh, drop downs, you can also see that next to each symbol is a word. So it tells you exactly the type of question. So here we have text and label. And the text question is that free text question. If, if that's there, a mobile worker is able to type in whatever information they want to type in. And a label is just information that is displayed to the mobile worker. They don't actually perform any action against that label. It's, it's used usually for information provision of some sort. 
So it just shares information with the worker. Here we have multiple choice and checkbox question. So a multiple choice question type is used when you have multiple answer options and only one answer option is correct, or only one answer option can be selected. And then the checkbox question allows for multiple answers to be selected. Here are all of the numeric question types, so integer, phone number or numeric ID, and decimal. These are date, time, and date and time questions. This little symbol right here is for a hidden value. And hidden values are, are great because they hold information or allow you to perform calculations that are not visible to the mobile worker. And we'll actually show a couple examples in the form that we'll build. And you'll get a sense of what, what a hidden value can do. And then we have group questions, so you can um, add a group, and that basically uh, associates various questions one with another. You can have a repeat group. We won't talk too much about that right now. And then a question list, which basically allows for multiple questions to show up on the same screen rather than one question per screen. And then we have some multimedia capture here and some advanced options. So here's your starting point. Whenever you open a new form, this is what you'll see. And if you feel like you need some help, we have a link to our documentation. So here's our specification document. We're gonna start with this row. And we'll see that we need to create a question that's called client name. It's a text question. And the text that the mobile worker will see is called client name. I'm going to add a text question. I'm going to call it client name. So now you've seen some more information pop up since I've added this question. This section is called question properties. It shows you the type of question that you have. Basic information includes the question ID and the label. And if you click on this little question mark right here, it tells you what each of these mean. And so the question ID is an internal identifier. It doesn't appear on the phone. It does appear in your data exploits. And so um, throughout Compare, question IDs um, for questions themselves are, are unique. And so each question should have a different question ID. But it's, it's really important if you have um, a specific way in which you're numbering your questions or your question, um, a lot of times we want to make sure the question ID is, is clear and evident. So you see client name, you know when this information is exported that the information in that column is the client name. For research projects, oftentimes there are very specific ways in which questions are numbered. And so this question ID is, is really useful in that sense because while the mobile worker might not see it, the researcher who is looking at the data and analyzing it is able to see the answers along with that very specific question ID. And then the label is the text that appears in the application itself. So this so happens to be about the same client name. We also note that this is a required question. So we're going to click required. In this section, the logic section, is where you can actually add logic to a question. And so display condition, validation condition are the two most common types. Um, required is also common. So here we're saying the mobile worker cannot proceed to the next question until they answer this question. Display condition determines when a question is shown. Validation condition determines whether or not a question was answered as expected. And so we'll actually show some examples of that. But essentially there's this logic session. And again, the question mark. 
that explains exactly what this section does and provides you a link to more information. Very quickly, there's a multimedia section. This is where you can add multimedia of different types, image, audio, video, video in line. And then there's this advanced section that's used for very specific purposes. And for most projects, it's not necessary. So we won't be using it. So we're just gonna save that. Let's move on to the next question. So the next question is date of birth. And we see that there's validation conditions. For the sake of sequencing, we're gonna come back to that, but let's put in the date of birth question as well as sex. That's a big question. Required. The sex is the most choice question. And so you see a couple of choice options are automatically there for you. If you have the third option, you can just add it like this. I don't really need it. So I'm going to delete that. We'll send you a message if you delete a question, just in case you want to undo it. I do not. So notice for choice options, you don't have that logic section here. So all of that is configured at the question level. And another date question. And I missed some words, so. You can see how easy it is just add in questions. There's no programming that I've done, no coding, just clicking on question options on these question types. You can also copy and paste things into content. So, this question. And you just spoken. And I just copy and paste that in. I'll just mention really quickly that the question ID, you'll notice that there's an underscore, there's no sort of blank space. So if you have space between words, if you need to have a question ID with multiple words, Comcare will automatically put that underscore in there for you. Um, a lot of times we try to have question IDs with all lowercase. And that's not a requirement, but it's kind of nice because then you don't have to actually think about it. And it prevents errors when you start to do, uh, when you start to connect data across forms. Or if you're working with multiple people on building an application, having that sort of standard uh, makes it really easy for everyone involved. And that's, that's something that comes directly from programming. Uh, programmers generally do not capitalize as we're going along. So you can see that we just added in the last few minutes a few questions. Okay. And so I built this out ahead of time using the specification document that we have here. And I'll show it to you in full form. So you'll see here that we have our client name, our date of birth, our sex, arrival, caseworker. We got through a good number of these. But 
But what we are also able to do, once it's fully built, it will make sure that you have all of this so that you can actually build it on your own, um, are some display conditions and validation conditions. So in the paper form, you may have noticed that data first, for questions. Well, we know in comms here that we can actually calculate that. So we did a calculation here, which we'll actually, I think, go over in more detail next time. And then we output it here. And I'm actually going to show you how that looks. We also put some validation conditions. So date of arrival to the U.S., we want to make sure that they don't put a date in the future. So we put a validation condition in here. That basically says for this question, it needs to be sometime before today. It could be today, but it has to be either today or before today. And so those are some of the things um, that you see in this column that will make this, the form smarter and more useful for the worker. So I'm going to preview this. So if you click on the form name, You'll get back to the settings page, and from here you have an opportunity to either re-enter the form via this edit button or preview the form. And if you click preview form, the form will come up for you. We only have one form, so you'll only see this one, but if we had multiple forms, we could select the forms from this menu on the side. This is uh, an online way of previewing the form. You can also deploy it to your phone. Um, which we don't have time to do today, but we will do next time, where you can actually see what it looks like and, and what the experience is like on the phone. So let me just put find this Alexandra. If I try to put a date of birth in that's next year, you'll see that I get an error. And so I need to fix that. I actually just and this, this is a little different than what it looks like on the phone, but this gives you an opportunity to actually test um, and make sure that your form is working in the way that you expect. And so you see here that Comcare did a calculation based on that date of birth. This person is 25 years old. Female, arrived to the state, put in a date. Okay. Another validation condition, please enter a 10-digit phone number. All right, I'm going to skip these. And so you can see that it just allows us an opportunity to check and make sure things are working as we expect. Um, we only have about four minutes left. And so I maybe want to open it up for questions related to what we've been able to move through today. Great. Thanks so much, Alex, for the demonstration. I'll go through just a couple of quick questions now, uh, although we are almost at 4 o'clock. So if anyone has any additional questions, you can feel free to reach out to us um, or use some of the channels that we mentioned on the last training to get in touch as you work on building your apps before the next session. Um, one question that is sort of an organizational question, um, can you explain the relationship between the application, the module, and the form? Sure, sure I can jump in on, uh, on that. So what you're looking, what we've been working on so far is a form. You can think of a form as being a unit of work. So um, just like parallel to a paper-based system where you might have an intake form and then you might have a home visit form and you might have a, a requisition form or a referral form. And so what a module does is a module groups them together. And, and a module concept doesn't make too much sense right now because we haven't introduced case management. But basically, you can imagine if you're tracking a client over time, then you can group things that are related to a client together. So if you have an application that has 20 forms, then modules provide kind of an organizing principle. And then those modules combined together represent an application, and the app is the, the overall package that you've developed for a particular person to use. So it is possible, like, maybe you have a couple different roles in an organization, so you might have uh, a CHP app, and maybe you have a supervisor app, and maybe you have other, like, a nurse app. 
um, and those can all connect in different ways. But that unit of what one person is doing um, over the course of the job is kind of a good parallel to what an application is. Exactly. And so another example might be that you're tracking mothers and you're also tracking your children. And so perhaps you have all your forms related to mothers and a mother module and all your forms related to children in a child module. And so it would group those forms in that way, organize those forms, as Jeremy mentioned, in that way, all of which would be in the application. Great. And Alex, why don't you let us know what we can do to prepare for the next session just briefly as we end, and then we'll stick around at the end for another few minutes. Would anyone like to stay and do any more Q&A? Absolutely. All right. So as Meg mentioned, um, you can reach out to us um, over the next couple of days as you're working on building an application. Um, we can be reached at academy at demarvi.com. Um, we've also set up the discussion forum. Um, there should be a message in there. Feel free to use that form as well within the course itself uh, to raise questions to the training team or others who are participating in this series. And then here are a number of support channels that are available if you um, want to try to access those resources as you're, as you're doing some app building. Um, what we'll do is make sure that this recording gets into the course as well as the specifications that I've been working on. Um, and you can use that to actually build the same application that I've built so far, the same client intake form in your own space um, in Comcare HQ. And we'll make sure that any additional questions that you may want to use to practice are there as well. And then, and then we have a couple upcoming sessions, which I think, Meg, you'll probably speak to. But uh, between now and Thursday, if you, if you have time, if you have an opportunity, it would be great if you can um, build out the form that, that I showed you today, just so that you can get a feel for the platform and how uh, easy it is, really, to build a form like this, but also that when you pick up on Thursday, um, you feel like you have a sense uh, what it means to build a standard form, a standard sort of data collection form, and then we can move on to case management. And, and we'll touch base on some of the, um, the validation conditions and display logic that we showed you today but didn't quite talk about how to, to build yet. But you can go ahead and try adding questions and some of the basics, and you'll be well-placed for the next session. Exactly. All right, great. So as Alex mentioned, our next sessions are coming up on September 15th, this Thursday, and September 22nd. So you're absolutely free with your Demanji Academy account to work on that basic data collection activity and review this training once we put it in. Um, if you don't have time this week to be begin building out some of the steps that Alex demonstrated, you can always review this and do it prior to our final training or at any time that's convenient for you. Um, as a reminder, you'll need to be sure you create that Demagi Academy account using a link that we emailed out earlier, as well as the Comcare HQ account to follow the steps that Alex demonstrated. And so with that, I think I'll bring the session to a close. Um, please keep an eye out for the recording on Demagi Academy, as well as on the Meta website. Um, if you have any questions uh, now, we'll hang around for a few minutes to address those. And if not, please feel free to email me um, or Alex using the link that she just gave. Uh, my information is meta at rescue.org. Thank you so much for joining us today.